Okay, I just need some of those because uh, those I, I, I've planted Cheerios before. I thought they were donut seeds, so <laughs> probably the only person that did that. But I just, you know, just wanted to get some of those. This is a lot better than this. I go to <laughs> Off with his head. I brought along the uh, the iPod band that I have some time, and I hadn't done this song in a while. But I thought I was I was thinking about it this morning, and I, and I shared the scripture, you know, that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourself. And um, therein lies a problem. Because to be quite honest, I don't want some of you loving me the way you love you. And I just, just, I just kind of sit there for a second. Think of that. See, David knew from whence he came. I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. That's where he started. And David made a lot of mistakes. In fact, it's always funny to me when somebody says, well, well, if you could pick what Bible character you'd be, who would you want to be? And people, oh, I want to be David. David. <laughs> really? Now, I like the ending. Because he said he's a, God loved him. He's a man after God's own heart. But, man, I, I don't think, I, you know, I don't want to be standing trial for having a guy killed so I could have his wife. So all I'm saying is, in fact, no one ever says Job. <laughs> I've never had one person say, yeah, I'll pick somebody in the Bible. I'd love to be Job. Said, no, no, you want to learn from Job, but you don't want to be Job. But David, in the 139th Psalm, he said, I am wonderfully and fearfully made in the image of God. That's what I want you to get. Not because, in fact, one pastor said, well, you're kind of giving people a, a license to be... Um, egotistical and arrogant. And I said, man, you must be hanging around with different people than I'm hanging around with. Because a lot of people cannot get rid of their past. And they, they just, you know, they just kind of muddle through even as a Christian and they, and they don't realize who they are in the Lord. And you guys are singing about who He is. And in Him, I live and move and have my being. Amen. So I don't have to be, in fact, your past should be a guidepost, not a fence post. Yeah. And somebody said, but you don't know what I've been through. And I said, I, I'm not too worried about what you've done. I'm for where you're heading and what you're doing. And God can change lives. So I'm just, and in Oklahoma, we say it this way, God don't make junk. Yes. So there's nobody like that. And the reason I say it, because I want to do this little song. Um, and my wife went on a vacation and someone said, Jamaica. And I said, no, she went because she wanted to. <laughs> In fact, I, don't, I have a wonderful wife, but I just want to tell you, and some of you probably know all these jokes. She read about 20 of them. This is the only one I can remember. And she's a computer person, so she says, oh, you got to see this. You know, and it's, I, I get a kick out of that, but uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm an, an addictive personality, you know, and so I don't want to be addicted. And I read an article about people that are addicted to the computer. I'm not pointing at anybody here. I don't know anybody, how your habits are. But the funny thing about the story was, that they have now therapists. That that that's their thing is to help people that are addicted to the computer. But you have to go online to find those people. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was a weird thing. This is where you're going. That well, doesn't, you know, it's kind of like being hooked on phonics or something that you're trying to get off. You know. Um, so she said that one of the things that she came in the other day. This is, you know, you probably have heard this. This is when the fight broke out. She came in and she said, what's on the TV? And I said, dust. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> That's when the fight broke out. Just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to sing now. <laughs> and I said all that because by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you love one another. And that's the reason I love church. It is the most forgiving place. It is the most... A comforting place. Uh, that's why we call it a sanctuary. Amen. You should walk in there in this place and just go. Oh. It shouldn't be ever. And I saw people smiling. I said, what kind of a church is this? People come to church on Sunday night and smiling? <laughs> Some of you, I was telling the sister over here, I said, when I went to church when I was a kid, I, you know, I knew that if I didn't go, that I'd, I'd be struck dead. Yeah. That's what, you know, how many of you were raised like that? You better not be somewhere else. 
<laughs> and I told her that, that the thing that, how many of you went to, to Sunday school at 945? Sunday school always started at 945. And as a kid, I thought it was in the Bible. <laughs> because, I mean, everybody did it, and I thought, well, it must be a problem. Anyway, so I want you to do this little kind of calypso -y thing. We've done it before, but I hadn't done it in a while, and I felt like it would be a good thing to do. And just, you know, if you want to look at somebody and point at them when you're talking about Jesus loves me, and I love Jesus, and he wants me to love you. And if there's somebody that you really need to make sure they know that, <laughs> then you know, what, you know who you are. And you know what to do because as much as as much as we struggle with it, that's what we have to do. That's right. So we want to build everybody up tonight in the love of Jesus. And so if these guys are ready, you guys ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Can you see the palm trees already? I hear a drum. Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and he wants me to love you. When I love thee, I love you, man. World will see his love. You got it goes like this. Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and he wants me to love you. When I love you and when you love me, no. Some of the guys don't want to do that. Everywhere you look around, People putting people down That sure makes the Lord too proud Make the Lord smile and love abound Oh, Jesus loves me and I love Jesus And He wants me to love you Even you, man When I love you and when you love me The world will see His love to play, guys There are Baptists here, are there any Baptists here? Okay, we can dance Jesus came, he brought his love. He died, he rose, he went above. He sent his Holy Spirit down. Shouldn't that really be enough? Oh, Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and he wants me to love you. Yeah. When I love you and when you love me, the world is love to all. This is brought to you by the letter O. I think you got it, come on. Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and he wants me to love you. When I love you and when you Sisters 
Sometimes people say, why do you repeat yourself? Because some people actually ask me. In fact, I had somebody the other day pass me. I'm, I'm almost laughing about it. They wanted to know if I had any of my jokes on CD. <laughs> and I said, you're the one, huh? <laughs> you don't get out much. You know. But anyway, so there are times, sometimes you just tell the story because someone said, you know, I brought somebody to tell the story. But the thing with spiritual and spiritual Especially in Oklahoma, you've been around spiritual people. And there's not a definition in the dictionary, but if you are not spiritual and you're around a spiritual person, it won't take very long for them to let you know you're not. I, I, was, I traveled in a quartet out in California, and these guys were very spiritual. I love them, but I'm just saying, I, I just, I love church. I have fun in church, probably too much, and I apologize to anybody that's offended. But when they would test microphones, these guys would say, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. That's how they tested microphones. And me, I said, like, Mary had a little lamb. The doctor was surprised. <laughs> when old McDonald had a farm, the doctor nearly died. And they said, no, 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 you can't do that. Spiritual. So that song wasn't very spiritual, but I think it tells us something. Now, the only people I tried to avoid on the street and I, I, I mean this in the, the nicest way because I used to be able to tell if somebody was crazy. I would usually give them a wide berth. You know, someone walking down the street just, and you're just going, well, okay. You know. But now I can't tell with the phones and the thing, the Bluetooth thing, I can't tell. So I actually have stopped more than one person and I said, are you crazy or are you on the phone? 
because if you're on the phone, I'll just walk right, you know, with you. But if you're crazy, I just don't want to really. And by the way, does anybody know how crazy people get around town? Just so you know, it's not spiritual. It has no spiritual significance, but crazy people get around town by the psychopath. <laughs> Okay, I have a little confession. I'm going to do this song and, and um, this next song, and I have a confession to make. I was invited, and some of you probably have already noticed this, but uh, I, well, I didn't know for a long time that there was ADD and ADHD. I thought ADHD was ADD in high definition. <laughs> I figured I probably had that. I, I don't know. It's shiny things. Look. And, so I'm, I'm confessing this only not because of that problem, but I was invited to sing out in, I live in Guthrie, and they had an art festival. And they asked me, the, the guys called me and said, would you like to sing for an hour out under the tent? And I said, yeah, anytime I can sing about Jesus for an hour outside, I'll do that. The problem was, and it's not really a problem, it's my problem, uh, there were about 80 seats in this tent. And there were only two people there. Which is not a problem. I didn't worry about the number as far as singing to them, but the two people that were there, one of them was the guy that invited me. And the other one was the sound man. <laughs> so really there was no one there. So I'm trying, you know, I know they can hear you, but you know, it's just, I'm not really focusing. This song was written as a country song. And when I do it, you'll, you'll know it. You've probably heard it if, if you've listened to any country over the last 20 years or more. But then Bill Gaither and Larry Gatlin got together and collaborated on a Christian version of the song. That's what I was supposed to be doing. I sang a Christian verse and then I sang a half of a chorus of All the Gold in California. And I said, Lord, I'm so sorry I just got back on. And no, no one was there to notice, so, you know, it was okay, but I just thought, you know, focus here, sing the right words, because I believe this, in the, and I'm a lyric guy, I, I, I love good lyrics, the, the lyric, the, the line in this song that touches my heart, and it, I hope that it does something inside you, it says, imperfect, but forgiven. Now, I was reading the other day about, you know, just because we have the grace of God, does that just mean we go out and do things because, you know, we're saved? And it says, God forbid. But there are times you just goof up and you need some grace. That's why it's amazing grace. So I like that line of the song. If you've ever been there and done that, bought the t-shirt and the matching teacup and saucer, then you'll know what we're singing about. So, Greatly blessed, highly faithful.
sea. Your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, and I will. Jesus. 
Jesus, or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence? Oh, to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. That, and, and I never sing songs that don't touch my heart. Uh, and, and someone says that's a little selfish. I don't just do songs just because they're popular. Or something. It has to minister to me so that I can share with you from my heart, from the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. And I'm glad that people have written lyrics that touch me so I can share them with you. But in fact, that church over there where Pastor Jerry is, over there and more, uh, there's a little lady, and, and it's been a while since I've been there, so her name is Ozella. And um, every time, and she's, you know, getting up there a little bit, and every time I come, she'll say, can you please sing in the garden? And the only time you hear that song is at a funeral. Well, I, my, and of course I'm getting to be one of those older people, but we've always honored our older people respected them and my wife always even when we're young we like to be around old people it's just, not because we want to be them. I'm just saying you just they have stories they have things that need to be shared and and uh, and, it, and I don't mean this to sound rude but it's usually somebody else's old people I'm just say it you know people would get around my mother and she was quite a difficult woman they say oh she's so you know and then you get around something and I'm just saying this sometimes but you need to listen and you need to pay attention and so then I had a couple of times I sang it, and somebody said, are you going to sing that again? I said, Sister Ozella wants me to sing that song. Give her a little bit. It's only three minutes of your time, and if you don't like it. But it, to me, it's a little bit of the same message. And I did a deal one time because, I, and, I, I, and I don't think you have that problem, this problem here, but I never thought that music would be a bone of contention in the church. But it has become that. It's just an odd thing. And I did a deal one night with some, I guess you'd say, and I'm definitely not contemporary, but I did some contemporary song, but I tied it to an old song. God's still speaking to people, and the young people writing different things, but same, same, and I'll get this wrong, sent, sentiment, sent, sent, sentiment, not sentiment. That's a different thing. Sometimes I mix my words, and, and uh, my wife had explained to me that you don't take things for granted. <laughs> Don't laugh, because I had a guy the other day that he said I was 40-something years old before I realized to make ends meet was not M-E-A-T. He said, when we were poor, we thought that when you made ends meet, you had some meat on the table. So all I'm saying is that sometimes we, 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 uh, we, we don't listen. We just say, oh, that feels good. It, it, and it, what did Dick Clark just say? I give it a 92, you can dance to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing wrong with enjoying what the, the style, but the lyrics have to get you. Yeah. And I want to tell you this because I was in a, at a youth camp, not recently. I was doing a youth camp last, this last, when I did that, and that's when one of the guys asked me, he said, are you our speaker? And I said, yeah. He said, how old are you? That's when I told him, I said, when I was young, the Dead Sea was just sick. <laughs> but I was sitting out there listening to the worship band, and I wasn't mad at them or anything, but I'm sitting next to some young people, and I asked them, honestly, I said, without the thing up there on the screen, can you understand the lyrics? And they said, no. Now, the only reason that bothered me a little bit is I want you to get the lyrics. And this song touches me like I can only imagine. And the thing is, not an imagine because he is with us. He said, he'll never leave us, never forsake us. So if you are one of the folks that don't mind this song, I just wanted to share it for Sister Ozella, which I hadn't seen in a while, but I just thought this song 
And if you haven't heard of it, maybe you're a younger person, you never heard of it. I was in one church, and the, the band, a couple of the guys came up. I had done Blessed Assurance. And a couple of the guys said, man, that's a powerful song. Where'd that come from? <laughs> I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, didn't know Blessed Assurance. That bothers my heart just a little bit. I don't care how you do it. I love that amazing grace. Your chains are gone and all of that. Write them. Sing them. Let your heart give, give praise to the Lord with them. I'm not, I'm not an beginner, so I'm happy anything you do to lift up Jesus. But I just want it to be a thing where you don't shut yourself off from like a song like this. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses sing it if you know it and He was with me and He talks with me I am. I will 
glorify the King of Kings. I will glorify the Lamb. I will glorify the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. I was, uh, I had that problem when I went to the psychiatrist one time, and he said, what's the problem? I said, people don't notice I'm around, and he said, next. <laughs> strange. But I, I was reading the scripture about, you know, anything that exalts itself above Jesus needs to be torn down. And uh, I listened to a little sports radio. It's hard for me to do anymore, because I'm... Uh, I don't see any little kids, and I'm not trying to be mean, but I, I mean, I hear so many cuss words. Just, I, I'm just thinking on sports, and the one that just puzzles me to no end when they'll say, well, that was sure as hell. Yeah. Now, that's sure. Okay? That, that's not actually a, a, a misstatement, but they're not understanding it. But I was I was listening. They were talking about baseball. I'm not a, a I'm not a fan, a fanatic. Let's say I guess if that's what a fan is, I enjoy sports for the the main reasons that you don't know the ending. Anything that I watch, I already know the ending. I watch Star Trek. I know that Mr. Spock is not going to die, even if it looks like he's going to die. I know he's not going to die because he's got to come back next week. Okay, so I mean, I'm just saying there are things. So sports, that, that's one thing, but they were talking about baseball and they said that, that the, uh, there's not as many people that are, that idolize players. And even as a kid, I guess I was taught not to do that anyway. Uh, somebody can be, you know, don't be offended. I'm just saying there are people that they know every stat there is. But if you asked them a scripture, they wouldn't have anything to say. Now, I, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine that, um, and some of you might have heard of the group Koinonia. I don't know if you ever heard them, or you go back even farther. There was a group called Sunlight, and um, yeah, I go way back. In fact, I'm an old movie buff. You can tell by the film on my teeth. <laughs> but if you Google the thing, is that how you say Google, not giggle? I said giggle, and somebody laughed because it's Google. There's a guy named Harlan Rogers, and there's Hadley Hawkinsmith played guitar, and he played for Neil Diamond until he retired. And then somebody was saying that he had a, a sweet video out there on YouTube right now, but these are all Oklahoma boys. But I remember uh, that there was a place down on Northwest 10th and Western. If you know that area, it's not a great area, but there used to be a, a little place down there called the Open Door. Yeah. And Hadley Hawkinsmith, they were in a band, they were the first band they had like a Chicago sound. They were the first ones to ever, before Lynn Anderson, I think it was Lynn Anderson that did uh, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. They were the first ones to ever record that song before she did. And somebody found me a cassette and I got to hear them. But Hadley Hawkinsmith got saved. And he started going down there to the open door. And playing, this is an incredible guitar player playing at the open door on a Saturday night with people just coming off the streets. And then one of the other guys got saved. And then one of the other guys got saved. The whole band got saved, the four guys. And they ended up playing with, with, uh, with Andre Crouch. In fact, back some of you remember the big Hammond days, Hammond organ. Well, they had a B3. Well, they couldn't get it in the bus. That was the first time anybody had ever cut the legs off a of Hammond. So they could get it in the bottom of the bus because they didn't have computerized stuff. The only reason I mention this, these were these were guys that really were excited about their relationship to God, came through a lot of things. But one guy got saved, and then the other ones got saved. And I remember they used to come to our church sometime because we, we have we had mutual friends in our church. And Harlan Rogers would get up there and play, he's an incredible keyboard player, and he'd start doing an old hymn. I had sort of got away from those. But he'd start singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And you're going, wow. That just, just reach inside of you and, and, and turn your head. So I, the, the reason I'm saying that is that sometimes we get somebody that will, will, will tell us, okay, we've got to tear these things down. 
and get back to the right foundation. Is this exhorting? Okay. I just want to make sure I'm doing the right word. And we, we get down to... Oh, I thought you were looking at your watch there. Uh, <laughs> no, I thought... I saw, see, I never mind. I never have minded when people do this. That doesn't bother me at all. It's when they do this. <laughs> then, then I know there's a, there might be a problem. But I'm saying when you get down to the only foundation that will stand, you start finding, like you go to, to Hebrews the 11th chapter and idolize those men of faith. So I said, well, that doesn't sound very fun. Again, I'm not a ginner. I'm not against sports. But I say when they were talking about that, I thought, well, that's a good thing not to idolize. I liked Sandy Koufax when I was a kid. But I didn't idolize him. You know what? In fact, I was in a service the other day, and I had made a comment about Brother Phillips. That was my pastor when I was a little kid out in California. And this guy came up after me and said, did you go to church at the Miracle Church? That was the name of it. And uh, if some of you have probably seen the pictures of Compton and they have that big donut. If some of you have ever seen that big donut, well, our church was right next door to the big donut. What a great place for policemen and for church people. <laughs> you look like you can take them, so. <laughs> I meant no disrespect. I'm just saying it's just funny that it was there for us. But. Um, and I just, I was so cool because he was still in church. But we hadn't seen each other since we were little kids. And I said, oh, do you remember Brother Melton? Brother Melton used to lead singing. And he gets so anointed. And I know this doesn't mean anything that, you, that, that he could jump high. But he would actually be like this right here. And he would jump over the pulpit while he's leading singing and start dancing in the spirit. And one time I saw him it would be like that door there. And he just danced out the door. Uh, and I used to sit right there where I was sitting tonight. I could still see him. The music had stopped for 45 minutes. He was dancing out the door. Didn't have any music. He was just loving Jesus. He was idolizing Jesus. So I'm just saying that sometimes we have to get back that there is no foundation other than Christ. Amen. And we used to sing it as kids. You know, the wise man builds his house on the rock. And uh, anyway, so that's sermon number 23. You get printed copies later, two for, for a dollar. I'm just kidding. Um, I want to do, I've had a lot of requests, uh, but I sing anyhow. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say when that lady asked me to sing in the garden. I thought you were going to say, kind of like, you know, you should be on the stage, the first one out of town. Or could you sing on a hill far away? Like they're all in there. Okay, you don't need them. All. I know that. But I appreciate, I appreciate Pastor when he, he said you need to sing this song. And uh, I had quit doing it only because I thought most people thought it was silly. But uh, if you're a dog person, it's not silly for sure. Are there any dog people here? Okay, cat people. I love you. Cat people are different. That's all. Be <laughs> that rude. I'm just, and I, I tell them, see? See, she's ready to hit me with a water bottle. <laughs> I was at some friend's house. They have four cats. I, I, like I said, I love animals, so it's no big deal. But they never really come to you. Then one did and came and rubbed himself on my, on my leg. And I thought, I'm finally making progress. Then he did the same thing on a coffee table. <laughs> so really, I wasn't really, it was just I was good furniture. <laughs> So anyway, this, uh, this song touches, like I said, touches me. And a guy, if you want to look it up, it's a guy named Alan Levy that wrote this. And there's another song I haven't done of his. You might get a kick out of it. it is, uh, it's called uh, Hallelujah for Krispy Kreme. Yes. <laughs> talking about people that need to be slid down that little sugar thing. You know, maybe their attitudes would be a little different. So, so and I've never done that one, but this one I, I like. It was a rainy old day. It was cold outside. So I let you in. Now you are at my feet, you are fast asleep. 
made if that ain't love. We 
do this in a Pentecostal church. Are you ready? Praise God. 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 Praise God, praise God, praise God. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey after all these years. Who would ever thought I'd be standing here today when I was but a boy? I never thought I'd reach this age. But God, in His mercy, has seen fit to give me life. And I just want to praise Him for the breath I breathe tonight. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey. After all these years, keep your eye on the master, never lose sight of the goal, don't forget the eternal vision, is to make heaven your home, all the shiny things around us, will grow dark and fade away, but heaven's light is Jesus, he grows bright. is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. And I don't regret one single day. I don't regret the narrow way. And I don't care what the people say. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey after all these years. There's still joy in the journey after all these years. Sparrow can fly. 
in death, Jesus, remember the feet hanging by his side, and he spoke with so much love and compassion. Then he took care to pay. spiritual, but I, I look for things to, um, the, the Bible is, um, well, we know that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life, and that's why this book never gets old, and, and there's always some, now I'm not talking about a new revelation, there are some people who seem to have to be on the cutting edge, they have to have something, I, I, I know a guy, and when I say, uh, in fact I used to sing with him, and I would say he was a friend, and I, I don't mean this to sound rude, but I've lost some friends over the years that got away from the fire. And, and I, I'm not proud of, of this as far as, and, and it's just me, I, I, I read the book, I can't fellowship with people that, I didn't say I'm never rude to anybody. But there's a, there's a funny little thing that, that some people say, well, that's, and I remember hearing this when I was a kid, like going to a bar, they say, well, you, you got to reach them. It didn't usually happen that way. There were, uh, in fact, my sister was one who said, well, you know, she was, she married th this guy, but he wasn't a church guy. But she said he will be. Well, he wasn't, and he didn't. And again, I'm not judging, I'm just asking, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying something that the Bible's pretty clear about having no fellowship with the works of evil. So if that's hard, no, I'm just saying, I didn't say ever be rude, and my wife has a little story there in Guthrie, and just, this is not to, to brag on me, I'm just saying I will always, I want to have, a, to shake a hand, I want to smile, I want to show someone the way. But I will not beat you into submission. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And every man, woman, boy, and girl will have that opportunity to have the Holy Spirit draw them to Jesus. I was stunned in Oklahoma when they, I saw a statistic that, and, and the, those of you in Oklahoma know there are, there are more Baptists in Oklahoma than there are people. <laughs> And the only reason I say that is I can get the Baptist say you, you could die and don't get off the roll. I'm just saying it's, it's a, and not being mean to them, I, I love the Baptist people. They're strong on salvation. That's why this bothered me because the survey showed that, and it, don't quote me, it was one would be too many. It was a very little uh, percentage, but some Southern Baptists were saying, well, maybe there's another way to heaven besides Jesus. I said, one Christian that, that would say that just, you, you just need to be slap silly. I'm not the one to do that. I just so in my wife's little shop there. This Guthrie is a is a a, a um, tourist town. A lot of folks stop there. Well, 
This couple came in. I was, my wife was running an errand. We live upstairs in the old building. She said, can you come down? And then she would say something like, okay, Mr. Friendly, don't drive people crazy. <laughs> so I'm just there for a little while. And while I'm there, this couple comes in. Two guys. A couple. Okay? And you say, well, how did you know that? Well, the, the late, the, the, Female-ish one. I don't know how to say it. I'm just saying they wanted me to know. She didn't have a man purse. She had a purse purse, and was making sure. And again, my wife has homemade shortbread and some Anna's cookies and coffee, and I I was welcoming. But I, I will tell you. That's where I struggle. It was like fingernails on a chalkboard for me. Not because of the Lord wanting to love them. My natural thing was saying, wait a minute, I don't want them in here. Well, first of all, I'm, and I don't, no, I'm not going to say that. I was just laughing. If, and if you're a Democrat, I'm not being mean, but I'm saying, you know, I, you can be offended in America. That's the one lady said, did I offend you? I said, you didn't, but if you did, that's okay. I can be offended. I don't know what the big deal is, you know, people say, well, you said something like that. I said, okay, that's one part of, anyway. So I was polite. Now, I, and I, I'm just telling you that I struggled with that because there are people who say, well, you have to love them. I, I was not rude, and, and I will say that I did the best I could to, to share, you know, and my wife's place is a peaceful place. I believe that. Where we are, and that's what this story is about. The, the peace of God, and I probably shared some of this, like I said, with you, but I want to share a couple of little slants on it just in, in quickly. But I'm just saying it, and, it, and it's hard for me to even mention that because I want to love people into the kingdom of God. But I want them to change. I'm not changing my convictions. And this gentleman I was telling you about, he's writing his own New Testament because he doesn't think it was written properly. I understand people talk about, well, that's this and that, you know, King James. I said, you can say all you want to do. Say it. But don't change a jot or tittle of that book. Amen. You be in fear of your soul. And God said, don't be worried about man who can kill this body. You be concerned about God who can kill your body and your soul. And I believe in heaven and hell. And I made my reservation. I'm going to heaven. And I had, I, I've had friends, I had one friend, I didn't, their, their daughter was living with a guy for a long time. I didn't judge it, I judged it, they knew better. And then they got married. Thank you, Lord. I didn't go to the reception. He said, well, how rude. That's what she said. I said, I couldn't glorify this. I'm glad you got things right with the Lord. I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just saying it was a decision I made because I want to make sure that I know Him and the power of His resurrection and I don't water this down to where people, and there are people now, and if I don't hear the term seeker-friendly one more time in my lifetime, it'll be one time too many. So well, we don't want to scare them. I just, I get, I don't say laugh, but, I, but it interests me that people watch all kinds of ghosts on TV and in the movies. But you mentioned the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not afraid of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. Just kidding. But people say, well, if they come in and they see the Spirit moving, they get scared. I said, the Bible says that the, the, Holy, the Holy Ghost is a sign to the unbeliever. Amen. Your life should be different. Your language should be different. When you shake somebody's hand, you're imparting to them something from you, and that better be Jesus. Because you are important in the scheme of things. And that's why this, this, this passage here about Jesus, and you know the story about Jesus being asleep in the boat. And that's the first thing that should tell you. I had to tell a gentleman this morning, we are talking after church, and he's talking about the rough time he's having. I said, I wish I could stand up here and tell you. I honestly wish that I could tell you that when you come to Jesus, everything will be just wonderful. I wish I could do that. There are people that, that exude that. And they just, 
You will be prosperous and nothing will... And I'm just saying, I can't find it in the book. In fact, I didn't sing the song tonight, but I'll tell you, next time I'm here, I'll have it down. I, a, a friend of mine was through the hurricane in South Texas. And every time I'd call him, he'd say, I'd say, how you doing? There's a pastor down there, and the church was messed up in his house, and, and all these things. And he said, all is well. All is well. And I said, but, but what about... He said, all is well. He said, I'm just dealing with the junk. And then he, every time I talked to him, he said, you need to write a song about dealing with the junk. So I did. I did it down there for him just a, a month or so ago. He says, I know Jesus is Lord. I know his, his, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I know all these. The Lord is my shepherd. And even though I know it, I'm still dealing with the junk. And I told this gentleman this morning, I said, God never promised you you wouldn't have a rocky road. But he did promise you a good pair of Nikes. He will give you the right equipment to get through those situations. And you will shine. And you will look back at the Lord will tearing and Jesus not coming. And you, you'll look back at some of those things and say, that bothered me then? Because you will be stronger for it. So I said, those that endure till the end, there are storms. But here's the key. Jesus is asleep in the boat. And the songwriter wrote it this way. No water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. Amen. That's right. That's right. And the thing that I want to just to leave with you, and I say this, well, I, I sometimes tell people I'm not a real estate agent, so there will not be multiple closings. <laughs> and if anybody ever asks you some, some new Christian or somebody that's puzzled by the Bible and they say what should, where should I read in the Bible make sure they have one with red print and say read anything red yeah. you don't know where to go just, just open the Bible find something red you can't lose reading red stuff so here in, in Mark the fourth chapter and it's after Jesus, and you know the story, said, peace be still, and the, and the, the, the storm calmed. Now, first of all, he wasn't bothered by the storm. That's, that's one of the things. But here, here's what I, wanna, I want you to, to be aware of. In the 40th verse, in the red print, and Jesus said unto them, why are you so fearful? Now, we have the advantage of having this word for a long time. They had been with Jesus. They, 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 they were inseparable. The disciples were with Him all the time. And how many times did He have to say, Oh, you little faith. You know, one time He said, How long do I have to be with you? Before you get it. And so Jesus says to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And okay, that, okay, so he corrected them. He was, he was helping them. And here's what they said. 40, verse 41, last verse, it says, And they feared. He just said, why are you fearful? It says, and they feared exceedingly. They just been through a storm and Jesus said, peace be still, and the storm calms. And now they're afraid. Because they saw him do it. And they said, feared it exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That's what I've been trying to sing to you tonight about what manner of man this is. Do you know him? Do you know him and the power of his resurrection? What does Acts tell us? If the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, if it dwells in us, it will quicken. That's the King James word. The, the, the other word is in, it will give life to your mortal body. Does anybody need some life spoken into your body? I need something resurrected. I want to know him. Let every man be a liar. And let my God be the truth. I don't want to listen. I don't want to listen to people that tell me, well, that Jesus may be the, the one of the ways. Turn that off. They exalt him. Yes. 
What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Do you know what manner of man this is? I probably told you this story. Short story. I have, a, I have a big van. I drove those big vans forever. I got that van six, seven years ago now. Time flies when you're having fun. I don't remember. But we got it out here about five miles just south of Stroud on Highway 99. Pastor after church that morning, he said, we're not going to eat. We're going to go look at a van because he knew I was looking for a van. I had 354000 on my last one. I don't buy new ones. I don't know if anybody's ever bought a new custom van. But I went to look at one once, $75,000. I told the guy, I said, I'm not buying a house. <laughs> you know, maybe you can put me on a list when this guy gets it five or six years old, maybe. You know, so we found this one's older than I wanted, but, but it, was, it was good. And the first thing I noticed, and I'm, I'm sorry, and I don't mean this, again, I'm just apologizing, because I don't think smoke can send you to hell. I, I, you might have to go to hell to get a light, but I don't think that, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just saying. But I don't like to drive a vehicle, I don't like to be in a vehicle that smells from smoke, and you can't hardly get that out. I, I've been in them. So I was very pleased, I got it, I said, this is nice, it, it smells good, and, you know, and it didn't smell like they were trying to cover it up. So I thought that was really good. Well, I got the, the van home, and I'm having fun now, you know, kind of putting my little touches on it and wax it. You do that when you first get something, right? You know? Now I don't care as much. <laughs> My wife went through the drive through at the bank and tore up the... And somebody said, you saying your wife did? I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm glad she did instead of me because I couldn't have got away with it, you know. <laughs> but, and I went to see about getting this thing fixed and they wanted $1,500. I said, it's got 200,000 miles on. What the world do I care about? So I just put some wood in there and some screws and somebody said, I like your, your body work there. It, it drives. It's good. I'm not griping about it. I'm just saying it's a work vehicle. It gets me here to church. But when I got it home and I'm kind of fixing it up before that, and I was going to put a CD in there, and I pushed the button and a CD came out. And then I, I have to tell you, I, I am my mother's son, so I know how to worry. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to call the church. So I'm going to have to. Wonder, but I don't know what they've done in here. <laughs> I don't know. So I just, I said, well, I got it. And it was a hand, uh, homemade one. So I didn't have a label on it. I pushed the button. It was a worship tape. Yeah. No smoke in a worship tape in my, in my CD player. I didn't know any of those groups. Uh, whoever, but it was really good. But one of these songs... I, I listened to it, and a couple of them I've done, but this one just, I know you probably have heard it. In fact, I was in a little church in Kansas the other day, and the lady was praying. It was a, a kind of a traditional church, and she was doing the prelude or something they call it, and, and she was, I heard her playing this song, and I said, oh, wow, uh, you know, that's, this is just really cool. And it's, again, it's been written a lot of different ways. We've sung it all, you know, for, for years, take this whole world to give me Jesus. We're saying, I've decided to follow Jesus. And this one just says it this way. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Give me Jesus. And when I am alone, when I am alone, when I am alone, give me Jesus. 
Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for speaking sweet peace to my life. I can rest in you. You are everything. I love you, Jesus. As pastor comes, would you just sing it with me? Oh,